A good morning. I've got to go do some uh, chores this morning on the farm. Got some animals I got to feed. I'll let you guys hang out and I'll explain this. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I, let me first of all explain this. We added the ramp because my mother-in-law, she turned 90, she's getting, she's, put it this way, her engine is just wearing out. So to get her out to the car, to take her on errands to the doctor and just go for coffee runs, it's taking a lot out of her just to get from the front door to the car so we have this ramp that I got free from an estate cleanup and it actually came with this shed here you can see the little slot down below where it fit this used to be the box uh, part of a delivery truck for a Sears delivery van so we used the ramp on my barn for years to make it easier for me to get livestock feed to and from the barn. Uh, so we brought it down here, set it up here, it makes it easier to get mom in and out of the house. In her wheelchair we can get her up to the car and then she can get up and get in and out of the car and that way she reserves some of that energy because like I said she is getting older and I'm her caregiver so um, I just got to take care of my mother-in-law. That's what I do. Anyway, I have to take uh, get some rabbit feed uh, from the car that I went down. I ran out yesterday, so soon I'll stock up for the winter on feed. And then I won't have to be doing these single bag runs. So let's get this back to the rabbit house. Okay, now we just got to get this dispensed into my feed can. I keep my feed stored in metal cans and it keeps the rodents from eating them all when I do get rodents. Take that with me later. All right, now these guys get water. I have next week penciled in to call some rabbits and send them to freezer camp. I'll be calling from chickens too are uh, reducing my flocks for winter uh, 
don't want to keep a bunch of livestock through the winter for feeding. Feed bill gets too high, as any farmer will attest. And besides, you raise farm animals for food. That's what you do. And hunting season starts in about uh, four weeks from now. Time to bring the vacuum in, the shop vac, and do some uh, turd sucking. I take all the rabbit turds and put them in the compost pile. Yeah. A rabbit fertilizer, one of the best for your garden. I'm going to set this down here as a reminder to pick it up on the way to the dump trailer. But I've got to go make sure the goats have water. It was about time to bring the pressure washer out and uh, pressure wash all of the water basins for the livestock. Have them nice and clean. I, I pressure wash them about uh, four times a year, every season. Every change of season, I get them pressure washed. And they got this one. They got another one up by the barn. And then there's two down over here in the billy goat area. And right now, the billy goats are out because I'm breeding my doe. They're in season. And this is a good time to breed, September, October. I'll have uh, babies in February or March. My friend's gonna come over and help me uh, get my tractor started. He showed me a part I needed to get that's part of the ignition system. He thinks that that might be what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and look at that, order another part, and then he'll come over and maybe we'll get the tractor going. Make sure the turkeys have water. Yeah, they need water. We'll set this right here. I've got to order a couple more loads of rock to lay out on my path, but I want to get my tractor fixed first because I do want to get pea gravel in the garden. I get a load of pea gravel delivered and I'll work on that later. And my, my buddy, he's got that uh, wood miser sawmill and he said he'd saw up some uh, dug fir timber for me for raised beds in my garden. And that's what the original raised beds were is my other friend, uh, Steve Davis, over at Pacific Northwest Off Grid, he cut up a bunch of uh, timber for my barn and my garden. So I'm gonna get, uh, take uh, my friend, other friend up on his offer. Oh. I'd like to put automatic watering systems in here. I have, I have all the things to build it. I just have to get the time to build the things. And that way, all I have to do is add a little vinegar to the water to keep bacteria from growing in the fonts. And when I get that started, uh, you guys will be able to see my jerry rig watering system. I will never have to come out and water except to maintain it. The chickens will get one, the rabbits will get one, and the turkeys will get one. Okay, we get to feed the ducks, the geese, the goats, and lastly, we'll feed the chickens and then release the cluckins. They're all locked up in the chicken coop for now. Turn my lights on in here. Yep, that'll work. All right, feed these guys. Again, I have metal cans to store all of my uh, livestock feed in to help keep rodents out. So easy to feed the ducks and the geese. 
Now I can fill this thing up to the top and go away for a weekend and just toss a bale of hay out to the goats and I can be confident they're going to be fed and then when I get home, I spend a night somewhere, when I get home, uh, they'll still be eating on stuff. So that's what I'm trying to get everything arranged for. So I gotta go feed the goats and feed the turkeys. Turkeys get half a scoop. Oh look, you laid an egg. Kind of late in the season. Let's put it in here in your feeder. Turkey eggs are actually delicious. <laughs> They're pretty good. If anybody's allergic to uh, farm-raised chicken eggs, it's said that uh, get a farm-fresh egg, uh, eat just a yolk if that's it, if it still uh, causes allergies. Try a duck egg, a goose egg, a chicken or a turkey egg, uh, a, a different eggs, quail eggs. You may not, you may only be allergic to the proteins in chickens. So and maybe in farm raised chickens because that all depends on what they feed chickens okay let's feed the goats there's one course Whoop. There's the second course, and of course the goats have everything back here in the pastures to free range on. They eat the bark, grass, weeds, leaves, branches. They eat a whole variety of stuff back there. I'll just park this right there. This pitchfork is an interesting story. I remember when my dad got it, I was probably 13 years old. And then we had the barn fire and of course the metal raw burnt out through the barn fire. I went and got a new metal handle and reconditioned this and saved my pitchfork. It's because it hit the fire, it's not as strong in the forks, but I only use it for the hay. It suits me just fine, but it's an heirloom I got from my father that I really treasure. You know, the simple things in life. All right, we gotta do the chickens. And those biddies get a full meal. Turn my light off. Got to remember to get that feed bag and go put it in the trash trailer. I'm just going to ignore that turkey egg up there. It's really late in the season and I don't want to try to incubate any more. I have uh, the rodents getting in there and eating the eggs, at least they'll be fed. Hello, Miss Biddies. Miss Biddy, it's breakfast time. Let's eat al fresco today. Let's just eat out here. Look at this, a feeding frenzy. Way down there. Yeah. All right, come on in. And then <laughs> the door is shut. 
There's a mixed breed of chickens here. Uh, my daughter's friend moved and had to rehome her chickens. She had hens. So I went ahead and allowed her to keep them here. And I mixed them with my buff Orpingtons. Uh, so I'm culling all of the mixed breeds and sticking with just the buff Orpingtons. I can tell which ones are buff and which ones are mixed so I can just go ahead and cull them. So I've got about, I have 20 chickens all together. And I'll be call, uh, culling about 75% of them going into the winter with, I like to keep two roosters. I like to keep two roosters and uh, about six hens so that'll give me eight so maybe about two-thirds of the flock i'll uh, send to freezer camp uh, and maybe two ducks i have six ducks because in the springtime they'll lay their eggs they'll incubate the eggs and we'll have more ducks next year i don't need to go through winter with a big flock of ducks i might you know just keep two of them uh one drake and two hens or two ducks, but I got six of them right now. Oh, I only see five. Where's my sixth one? There's a goose over there. There's three geese here. I wonder if she became part of the food chain. I see a bunch of white feathers over there. I gotta go investigate. I'm done. Did I lose? Because I counted my ducks last night. They were all there. No, it's not a. It's not a kill. It's just a bunch of feathers that got blown over there. Where are you, you silly duck? One, two, three, four, five. Because I get up every morning and go to bed every night counting my livestock. Four goats, two does, two bucks. Uh, three turkeys, Tom and two Jennies, four geese, uh, I have at least two ganders and two goose, maybe three ganders, can't tell, the one's too, too young. And I got a bunch of rabbits and I'm only keeping one buck and two doe. And I've been selling some to help outfit other homesteaders. Uh, there was a couple that came up and really happy to get a trio. So where is my other duck? You know what? Well, I heard coyote over here night before last night. And doggone if it wasn't a... Uh, they may have come... They were across the street over there on the hillside the uh, night before last night. But I didn't hear anything last night, but I know they're in the neighborhood. So, one, two, three, four, five. It, it, I had a duck that was kind of lame. I was kind of letting her. She was going to be on the plans for culling this year because she was really limping around. She didn't move too well, but I think she fell to predation, and that's that's what happens is when they get to uh, the weakest gets to predation. And your stronger ones, they're the ones that survive. And it's right, survival of the fittest in nature. If they're weak and sick, well, that's food for the food chain. And then back off over there in the corner is my honeybees. They're considered livestock. 
I'm going to be gifting some hives to my friend's daughter uh, over at uh, Southern Oregon Safari where Buffalo Rome. Uh, his daughter Aria, uh, she a young lady who grew up with a, a, a little brother and he was a the little brother was a rhinoceros, but that's her word. She called him her little brother. He's like the little brother. She rides him and stuff. Anyway, I'm, she's interested in giving into honeybees, and I'm really interested in gifting her with two complete outfits of hive set up. So we're going to go over there and do that this week. So go ahead and click over there. Uh, Southern Oregon Safari where Buffalo Rome, Hayden and Jerry, myself, we're co-hosting the show. We have different guests that appear once in a while. And I think this week we'll be filming several episodes for our season two. So yeah, you're invited to come over and check out that, that page over on the YouTube channel. I do post them to my Facebook page, Jerry Hansen. Anyway, this is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm Jerry Hansen. I just wanted to share with you guys uh, my morning chores. Uh, this is autumn. We're heading into winter and farming is pretty busy this time of year because we've got harvest season. And then I'm frantically getting everything painted to check off all the items off my to-do list that I established for myself on January 1st this year. I'll uh, leave that video for you to show you, uh, share with you guys all the things I wanted to get done. And then that way, by the, this time, you can see how much I didn't get done. I just, I think I bit off a little bit more than I can chew. I don't think I'll get the outbuildings painted this year. I've got, I focus on the house, the sheds, and the greenhouse and the garden and the fencing around the house and that was enough. Uh, I'm running out of uh, time for the year and I'm running out of uh, funds for the projects around the homestead. So thank you for joining me. Please click that share button sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out. Uh, give us a thumbs up, like the show, leave a comment if you will. Remember, be safe, always be kind, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys in my next adventure. Right now, I'm really busy. I've got a lot going on. And then this week, I'll be filming across the street at Southern Oregon Safari where Buffalo Roam. We're gonna be featuring, I think, his cats, uh, cerebral and caracal cats, and his bison, camels, horses. Yeah, we're gonna be focusing on those, so stay tuned for that. Be safe. Bye-bye now.